Rightio, the new genuine Denso alternator has arrived. Start throwing it back together. Now one's up here on the bench. And this genuine one here through the dealer, they wanted 1855 bucks for it. But if we delete the Land Rover sticker off there, still says Denso made in Japan on the new one. And I got it from a another supplier down in Tasmania and it was 775 bucks so well worth the saving anyway I'll start bolting it back in and piecing it together and hopefully get this thing running in a couple of hours with the new alternator oh I better have a, a beer first though that's better well it's hot I'm... but she's in there got the belt on I just had to reposition this earth cable down here. That one there, unbolted it and rotated it a little bit because it's actually been rubbing on the back side of this hose. You can see there's a little shiny patch there. And where the battery cable comes up to the alternator, it's sort of rubbing on the chassis, so I put a little bit of rubber around it and zip tied it so that it doesn't fall out. Let's see if I can zoom you in on it. There it is, see the zip tie and the bit of rubber to stop it from rubbing. And um, now I've just got to start putting these coolant pipes back on. Keep going, eh? Rightio. Put some coolant lines and pipes and hoses and stuff back on. This big aluminium pipe here which feeds from the bottom of the radiator, which would be your cold side, back up into the thermostat housing in the valley of the motor. and this line here, which feeds from the coolant reservoir to the thermostat housing as well, also in the valley. There's two bolts on here, one down the bottom on this bracket here, and another one just up here that hold this pipe secure. So unless you unbolt that pipe, um, there's no way you'll be getting that alternator out, which is a bit of a pity because you lose all the coolant, but Anyway, not to worry, it's only a little bit of coolant. But I've been using some O-ring lube on all the hoses just to make them slip on a little bit easier and then if I've ever got to get in here again, it makes it all easier to pull back apart. Well, here's the worst part of the whole job, which is putting in this radiator shroud and the clutch fan. It really is the most time-consuming part just because you've got to be careful you don't break any fittings or anything like that down here but it's sitting in there loosely now now just got to wax some bolts in the shroud clip all the wiring back on spin on the clutch fan down there and mount some of these hoses back on the radiator and the intercooler and I'm, I'll be one step closer to being ready to start this big girl up and then hopefully the battery light goes off the dash if not well I'm up shit creek and I've got to look for another issue but I'm pretty confident that's what it'll be Right, yeah, here we go, mostly back together. Well, entirely back together, actually. These men are back in place. Air boxes in. All these hoses and electrical connectors and everything back on. Everything back where it should be. So I like doing things myself rather than paying people to do things to your car because chances are people don't put things back where it belongs and it'll rub through on something or... Next time you go to pull it apart, it isn't where it should be. But now I just need to reconnect the battery. Um, put a bit of coolant in it and fire it up and hopefully she's all good. No doubt it'll have a whole heap of codes on the, the dashboard. It'll have cracked the shits because the battery's been disconnected. But uh, I've got the trusty old GAP IID tool over here. And I'll be able to Clear the codes. Righty out, moment of truth, it's all back together. Hit the start button and I'll put the ignition on first and just make sure she's all good. And the radio down. What's gonna happen? Hey, would you look at that? The battery light's off. What a ripper. I've got no cooling in it, so I'll only run it for a couple of seconds. Um, now let me just put the phone down. I want to 
check the battery voltage, make sure it's charging. 14.5 volts. Beautiful. Nice and quiet. It's not cracking the shits about anything except for low coolant. So, turn it off. I'll uh, whack the coolant back in it that I took out and bleed her up. Now to bleed these up, I read, I think it might have been in an um, online service manual or something, this hose here, which goes up to this fuel heater or fuel cooler, I don't know what it would be. You take that hose there off, fill it up with coolant, um, and then once it's uh, all bled up, this being the highest point, air should all come out here, and once coolant's coming out, then you know that it's got no air left in the system. But after a uh, you know day or two of driving it around, I'd still check the level and top it up as required. But anyway, there you go. So that's uh, how to put an alternator back in one of these 4.4 TDV8s. Um, it all up, it took me probably two hours or something to put it back together. Three hours to pull it apart, so five hours all up. I uh, wouldn't listen to everything that you hear on the internet or read on the internet about how hard these things are to work on. Um, I watched a couple of videos, people are taking two days to do this job, but honestly all up five hours and I was taking my time. So if you actually sort of huddled through it, I dare say you'd get this job done even quicker, but make sure when you put it all back together, because um, it will take you longer to pull it apart because they all the extra bolts around the radiator shroud. I'd suggest only putting four or five bolts back in, particularly the corner bolts, and then maybe one in the middle at the bottom because that's where that big changeover valve bolts to and there's a bit more weight hanging off the bottom of the shroud, but the shroud's solid as. I've got five bolts in there and it ain't going anywhere. So anyway, thanks for watching. Running good, filled it up with coolant. It's a little bit over full, but I know that's how much was in there because that's what I took out. But take this hose off here. Oop, there it goes. Started spitting out coolant. Already sort of half blooded up before I started filming. But now I know if I uh, take it for a drive or whatever, the coolant level will be correct. She's idling up. Not sure why it's idled up, it's done it a couple of times since I've had it. Might be uh, while it's trying to warm up or something, even though it's a warm day. No weird lights on the dash. I'll uh, plug in the gap IID tool and clear all the stored fault codes because there will be, oh there it goes, it's just started idling down. There will be a whole heap of uh, stored codes from when it was uh, cracking the shits the other day when I was driving it and the alternator stopped charging.